A Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baharuka Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Most High Power of Israel. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, our Redeemer and Savior, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Yeshua, Christ, and other names. Ruka Kodash is the Holy Spirit that gives us the understanding of this truth, which is a token from our Savior Yahweh Shai. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstones, GMS, the ones who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing his gospel in all sincerity in his last days. Shalom also to the few sisters, Aquat, who are sincerely seeking his truth. It's the brother Yara Yaya Shar'ala from the GMS Italy camp, and the title of this lesson is going to be The People of Adam and the Breath of Life. I'm doing this lesson because the lesson I did yesterday touching on um, the sons of God, the fallen angels, the Nephilim and Anunnaki, I made mention of Adam and I said I was going to do a lesson on it. So unlike what they teach us in the churches, we're being taught that um, Adam and Eve were just created, you know, but they don't go, they don't, they don't teach us, they don't teach us the right doctrine in which the doctrine that's been taught in the church gets you confused. And, you know, it just leads you astray, you know. So if you have the spirit of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai walking with you, you get to understand this truth, you know. Because this truth is the pure truth. This is the truth that's going to lead you back out of, you know, darkness, that gross darkness, which is ignorance, you know. So, you know, as we, as I, as I say sometimes, this truth isn't for everyone, you know, just like the apostles always say, this truth isn't for everyone. Some people might listen to it and be like, oh, what's the saying, you know, and just leave, you know, that's you. But if the spirit of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is working with you, just like I said, you know, you're going to understand what we're about to teach, you know, through the spirit and power of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, hopefully this lesson is going to be edifying. So let's just get quickly into it. This is the book of um, Genesis genesis the first chapter and i'll go straight down to the 20th verse and it says i'm going here because you know i want to show you how you know we all came to be because you know people will tell you that the world was created in seven days you know in which these churches don't really they don't know what they're saying man in which those seven days are, are not really seven days because we know that according to the book of um um second peter the third chapter the eighth verse it tells us that but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the most high as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day so a uh, uh, one day to the most high is a thousand years so that's what the churches would not teach you so it took seven thousand years to create the whole thing you know and man was created on the fifth day now let's show you how it happened and that fifth day actually it wasn't only just one man and one woman that was created all living beings all the nations of the earth were created on the fifth day you know then out of that the out of all creation the most high chose his people you know and he, he named them the people of adam you know and there was a prime adam you know who led the people so now let's go quickly into it and it says this is the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 20 it says, And the Most High said, I'm remind, reminding you that here, it's not really the Most High. This is um, the word God means powers, you know. Now, if you go to the root word, sorry, I said, if you go to the root word, it tells you, this is, um, you know that in the Paleo Hebrew, you don't have the E, you know, and you don't have the O. So the right word here is Allah Hayam. But in the bastardized Hebrew, they tell you Elohim, you know, and the word Elohim is uh, is a plural word, you know. So if you go to the meaning, it tells you gods, you see, gods, rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, gods. So you see, it's not telling you one person. It's not even the name of the Most High because the name of the Most High is Yahweh. And I believe the name of the Most High is not mentioned, I believe, until the fifth chapter if I'm not mistaken, someone can correct me. The name of the Most High is Yahweh. So right here, why is it written gods? That's because 
you know, the Most High himself, Yahawah, he gave the plan to his son, Yahawah Shai, and the angels. So these angels and the, and, and the son of the Most High, which is Yahawah Shai, they were the ones who created everything, you know. But the Most High gave them the plan and everything, you know. The design was by the Most High. But his son, who is Yahweh Shai, and the angels created everything, which the word angel means, um, means a um, messenger, you know, in which those angels today are present on the earth. People that created the world with Yahweh Shai, they are, they, are, they are present on the earth and they are doing the work of the Most High Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And this is the proof. Now, if you go to the book of um, Colossians, the first chapter, speaking of the Son of the Most High, I'm going to read from here. I wanted to read from verse 16. It says, um, who, I'm, reading, I'm reading from verse 13. It says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, who had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, okay, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, the son of the Most High is Yahweh Shai, who was crucified for our sin, okay, who is the image of the invincible power, okay, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in, in earth, visible and invincible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So, Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High, was the one who created everything, you know, and everything was created for him. So, the Most High, Yahweh, gave the, the, the prince, the go-ahead to his son, okay, and the son, his son, and, and the angels. That's why in that scripture right there, you see, when, you, when it makes mention of God, it tells you it's a plural word, you know. It tells you gods, rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, gods, you know, which means power at the end of the day, you know. That's why it tells you because it wasn't alone. And this is the proof that... Let, let me give you another scripture showing you that everything was created by the Son of the Most High. This is the book of Hebrew, the first chapter. I'm going to read from the first verse. It says, The Most High, who had sundry times... And in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets at in these last days spoken unto us by his son, Yahweh Shai, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So you see, it's the son of the Most High that created everything. Unlike the Christians, they don't know this thing. They just say God. They don't, they don't make deep researches because the Spirit is not given to them to understand this book. This book is not a book like every other book that you just read like a novel and you just good to go. No, if you don't have the spirit of the Most High Yahweh Shmi Shai working with you, you can't understand this book. And then you need a teacher to teach you this book. And there are various Hebrew Israelite groups out there teaching this truth, but many of them are not teaching the correct truth. And I can tell you because I'm not paid for this, I'm not making any publicity. But I'm telling you because I am my job is to tell you the truth, you know, through the fear of the most high Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. The only camp that is teaching the hundred percent truth, because there is a hundred percent truth. That camp is the Great Millstone GMS. Okay, so stop wandering from camp to camp. If not, you'll get only confused. So speaking about the angels that were with the son of the most high Yahweh Shai during the creation, we're going to go into the book of um, John. The book of John. You know, the 15th chapter and the 27th verse, it says, I'll start from verse 26. It says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send, which the comforter is the Holy Spirit, which is the Rukah Kodash. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, Yahweh, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, Yahweh, it shall testify of me and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. <laughs> so you see, we have been with the Most High uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai from the beginning. We were part of those angels. You know, I'm saying we and speaking by faith. Hopefully, the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai counts me worthy of being part of that number. You know, so we were part of those people. You know, that were at the creation with Yahweh Shai. That's why you see the word God means powers you know elohim alahayam that's a plural word you know you know that's why you see 
tells you ain't gods, angels, divine ones, rulers and judges, you know. So now, just clearing that off the air, you know, letting you understand that, you know, what they teach you in this church is just far away from the truth. Now, let's get to the point of what we were saying. So on the fifth day, as I said, the Most High created all living beings, including all the nations, including everybody. He created them and we were created out of water, he says. In verse 20, first chapter of Genesis says, And the Most High said, and the powers said, I'll put it like that, because it was Yahweh Shai and the angels. And the powers said, let's, I'll put, I'll rather say the right word, Alahayim. And the Alahayim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So you see, it says, and the powers and the halahayam created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kinds and every winged fowl after his kind and the powers saw that it was good. You know, they saw that it was good because they're making reports back to the most eye that gave them the go ahead to do so, you know. So the point you should get here is every living creature that move it every, and the moving creature. OK, so every living thing that moves, you know, speaking of the, the beasts of the water, the fowls that fly, you know, and all nations and humans were all created on the fifth day. OK. Then this is what happened. On that fifth day, the most high now, you know, out of out of um out of all that was created, you know, the most high now chose his prime people. Okay. And this is the verse um 26. It says, And the power said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, you know? So making man in his image was giving him his likeness, giving him the understanding, you know? So a, a, a people was chosen, and the understanding, which is these laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay, this is the reason why I made mention the other day. I made mention yesterday because, you know, I was speaking about the, the, the commandments and the laws that. They existed already from the beginning. So this act was that of the most high putting order into man, you know. And what is order? Order is the laws, statutes and commandments, you know. So, you know, he says, making man after his likeness was, you know, giving the understanding of the laws. So another precept is the second chapter. Here in verse 7, it says, and Yahweh power formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. So the dust actually represents confusion and actual dust, okay? An actual element of the ground, okay? And it says, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. That breathing into his nostril is the laws the commandments, you know, the statues, the most high breath into his nose, you know, giving him these laws and statues, you know. So, coming here, let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. I'll start from the 24th verse. It says, For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall on into her. So you see, wisdom, that knowledge of, of, the, of, 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 of the laws and statutes of the Most High was breathed into Adam. Okay, it was breathed into man, which was a group of people that were, that were chosen out of all the people that were created. Okay. So that breath, you know, represents the law, knowledge, the wisdom of the law. Now, going back to going back to Genesis, um, let's go to the fifth chapter to prove more. Here in the fifth chapter, you see it says, this is the book of the generations. See, it gives you plural. 
of Adam in the day that the Most High created man in the likeness of the Most High made he him. Okay, in the likeness of Most High, says male and female created them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. You see, called their name Adam in the day when they were created. You see. So it's not speaking of just one Adam, though there is one Adam which is the prime, you know, which goes deeper than that. But we don't go do we'll just keep it simple, you know. But it says in the in the this is the book of the generations of Adam, you know. So it's speaking about the people. He say he say male and female created e them and blessed them and called their name Adam. He called their name Adam. So you can see this is not speaking of just one Adam, unlike what they teach you in the churches. Another question we should ask ourselves is now, Adam, according to what they teach us in this wacky tacky churches, they say Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel. Cain murdered Abel, and there was another child that was born who was set. That came to take the place of Abel. So the most I let's read from here in verse chapter 4. You know, this goes into how Cain murdered his brother. And now this is the punishment. Watch in verse 13, it says, And Cain said unto unto Yahweh, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So if it was just Adam and Eve, where do all these people come from? Where do all these people come from? So you can see that it wasn't just dealing with only Adam and Eve. You know, it tells you that on the fifth day, the most I created all living beings. They all came from the water, you know. They came from the water and the most I chose his people and he called them by the name Adam. But then there was a prime Adam. Okay. So it's a people. It's not just one person. Now to prove this point, we have to go to the, to the Apocrypha. You know, that's the book of um, Second Esdras that goes deeper into this. You know, that gives us the understanding of this. And mind you, the Apocrypha is part of um, the scriptures, you know. They were taken off um, in the 1800s. I, I can't remember the exact year. You know, you can look it up on, on, on Google, you know. But right here with me, I have uh, a King James version of the 1611 edition, you know. It contains all the scriptures, you know. So these scriptures were part of the scriptures, they were part of the Bible, in which, you know, these devils, which I'm going to make the next lesson, is going to be on, um, on Eve and the serpent in the garden, you know. Is they took these books out, you know, to, to further conf confuse you. But they did all this to their to their own, you know, destruction, man. So the second book of Esdras, the sixth chapter, you know. Now, it speaks about the creation of everything from the first day. You know, it gives you a profound understanding, you know. But I'm going to start reading from the 47th verse. It says, upon the fifth day... Okay, that's the fifth day. Thou said unto the seventh part, where the waters were gathered, that it should bring forth living creatures, fowls and fishes, and so it came to pass. For the dumb water without life brought forth living things at the commandment of the powers, that all people might praise thy wondrous works. Okay, so you see, all people came from the water, you know, the dumb water. That's where people came out from. And it says, Then this thou ordained two living creatures, the one thou callest Enoch and the other Leviathan, and this separates the one from the other. So on that day, you know, the most I created two different kinds of beings. Okay. It says one is Enoch. And one is Leviathan, in which the word Enoch is Anawak. Okay, in the ancient Hebrew, it's Anawak. It means upright. Upright, that's what it means. 
and Leviathan means the beast. What makes you upright, you know, the laws and the statutes of the Most High, the commandments make you upright, you know. And it says, and this separates the one from the other for the seventh part, namely where the water was gathered together, might not owe them both. Okay, so this is explaining furthermore. Unto Enoch thou givest one part which was dried up the third day, that it should dwell in the same part, wherein are a thousand hills. Okay, but unto Leviathan thou givest the seven part, namely the moist, and hast kept him to be devoured of whom thou wilt and when. You know, so you see, it's speaking about how the Most High gave the dry land to, to, to man, okay, and he gave um, the water to, 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 the, to the beasts of, of the ocean. You know, that's why you have the ocean is way larger than the land mass that we have, you know. So, I hope this is, this is clear, man, you know, tell, telling you how, you know, we humans came out of water. You know, now, if you write on, on the internet, you're going to see that, you know, 70% of our body, even, you see, 70% of our body is made of water, man, you know, more than 70%, you know, they say 72, some tells you 75, you see, we're made of water, you know, all living beings came out of water, you know, so as you can see, we were made out of water, so that's it, man, you know, um, and the God, um, right there, you know, you had, I'm going to speak a little on the, on the garden, you know, which is going to be the next lesson going to speak on eve and um the serpent so hopefully this lesson was edifying to the spirit and power of the most high it wasn't just adam it was the a whole people you know the people that had the laws statues of the most high so hopefully this lesson was edifying to the spirit and power of the most high unto the next one shalom